Hey everyone, I'm Puri and welcome back to Purology. Today we're diving into a unique experiment, a Frankenstein build that combines both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. I'll be testing how NVIDIA's DLSS4 transformer model for super resolution works hand in hand with AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 for frame generation in Escape from Tarkov. Stick around to see what kind of performance magic we can create. Before we jump into the benchmarks, let's set the stage. For those who aren't familiar yet, NVIDIA's DLSS 4 is the latest in AI-driven upscaling technology. It essentially renders your game at a lower resolution and then uses AI to upscale it to a higher quality, boosting your frame rates without sacrificing detail. In fact, in Tarkov, I found that DLSS 4 looks even better than native rendering with TAA. This is due to the way it handles aliasing, everything looks smoother, and the experience is just much better on DLSS 4 than even native. If you want to see a detailed breakdown of how DLSS LSS4 performs in Tarkov, check out my review of it linked in the upper right hand corner. Simply put, there's a lot to love about using DLSS4 in Tarkov. On the other side, we have AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2. This tech works by interpolating extra frames to ensure your gameplay stays incredibly smooth, especially during fast paced action scenes. Feel free to check out my Fluid Motion Frames playlist to see how it performs in Tarkov. Imagine pairing the crisp, high performance visuals of DLSS4 with the buttery smooth motion provided by FMF2, and that's exactly what we're exploring today. For this test, I'm pairing two pretty budget-friendly GPUs, the RTX 4060 and the 8GB RX 7600. This setup proves you don't have to break the bank to experience next-level gaming performance in Tarkov. To set this up, I first installed the latest NVIDIA app and drivers for the 4060 Ti. Once updated, I enabled the DLSS4 override for Tarkov in the NVIDIA app. Check out my short video on how to do this if you're interested. Next, I installed the latest AMD Radeon drivers for the RX 7600 and enabled Fluid Motion Frames 2 in the AMD Adrenaline software, using the settings you see on screen. Finally, I went into Windows Graphics settings and selected the 4060 Ti as the primary GPU for running Escape from Tarkov. Both the 4060 Ti and RX 7600 are solid 1080p gaming cards, but with DLSS 4, I can comfortably push up to 1440 on medium settings. The advanced rendering and aliasing algorithm in DLSS 4 lets me use performance mode while still delivering stunning graphics. Honestly, to me, it even looks better than native resolution with TAA high. So the big concern with frame generation is input latency. Basically, that's the delay between your actions and what you see on screen. I've been testing NVIDIA and AMD's frame generation technologies for years, and here's the TLDR. Frame generation is an impressive tool that can boost performance and enhance your gaming experience when used in the right conditions. It works by inserting extra frames between the original or raw frames. So even if it seems like you're getting double the frames, your input latency is still determined by those raw frames. So basically what that means is whether you're using NVIDIA's frame generation, AMD's FMF2, or even lossless scaling, these technologies are useful for making good performance even better, but they're not magic. They won't transform poor performance into good performance, okay? Now, when I took the system into the streets of Tarkov, the performance was off the charts, as you can see, hovering around 240 FPS no matter where I went, sometimes even more. In terms of input latency, the raw frame time clocks in around five to six milliseconds Seconds, and FMF adds roughly 5 milliseconds more as you can see on screen here. This gives us a total of around 10 milliseconds of frame time. To put that into perspective, smooth gameplay is typically associated with 60 FPS, which is a frame time of about 16.67 milliseconds. With our 10 to 11 millisecond total frame time, it's as if you're playing at around 100 FPS. It's absolutely buttery smooth and visually pristine. After years of testing frame generation technologies, here's a simple rule of thumb. If you're starting with around 80 to 100 raw FPS, frame generation can significantly enhance your experience, even in online multiplayer games. Considering that the average human reaction time is between 250 to 350 milliseconds, or maybe 150 for the fastest players, an extra 5 milliseconds of latency is virtually imperceptible for most people. In most cases, any perceived delay is more placebo effect than anything at this level of performance. Now, if you're starting with lower FPS than that, I don't recommend using frame generation because it's just going to make the input latency feel worse and even though the on-screen frames might show higher numbers it'll look even more jittery and stuttery than before. 
Before I wrap up, I just want to show you how smooth the setup looks on a 240Hz monitor. It might not do full justice to the experience, but hopefully you get the idea. The gameplay is smooth as butter. So here are my final thoughts on this Frankenstein build. Combining Nvidia's DLSS 4 with AMD's FMF2 really gives you the best of both worlds. The performance not only met my expectations, it blew them away. In fact, the gameplay felt even better than what I experienced using a single GPU like a 4070, which costs about as much as these two combined. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting that everyone go out and build a Frankenstein system. Generally, it's a better idea to stick with the single GPU, but if you already have hardware at this level and want to avoid paying extra for a new GPU, especially when prices are so high and availability is so low on pretty much everything, this dual GPU option is a compelling alternative. You could even opt for a lower tier AMD GPU like an RX 6600, 6600 XT, or 6650 XT for the FMF2 portion to save even more. Anyways, that's all I've got for this experiment. I hope you found it both entertaining and helpful to see Frankenstein in action. Check out the timestamps below to jump between the screen cap and monitor footage of the gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe for more hardware content. And if you got something out of this video, please drop a like or comment. It really helps support the channel. I'm gonna drop off here and let the rest of the raid footage play. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.